In this lesson, we will cover the new V-Ray Timeline component in V-Ray Next for Grasshopper. The V-Ray Timeline component is located in the Render panel of the V-Ray tab. In this scene, I've already got it set up and connected for demonstration, so let's begin by right-clicking on the V-Ray Render component and starting a render. As you can see, we've already set up a close-up view of the parametric facade using a V-Ray Camera component. The render seems a little bit washed out and yellowish in appearance though, so let's load in a preset file with color corrections to fix that. Right away, we'll see the color corrections update the image's exposure, white balance, and other settings to make it more contrasting and aesthetically pleasing. You can feel free to tweak the color correction options on your own as well to find a look that suits your preference. Okay, now let's hide the corrections panel and move on to working with the timeline component. Here we have the V-Ray Timeline component, which enables us to animate definitions and render animations inside of V-Ray for Grasshopper. By default, the number of frames is 30, but we can connect a number slider to the frame's input to increase the length of our animation. Let's connect this number slider here. Now we have increased the length of our animation sequence to 360 frames. You'll also notice that there are two inputs called Start and End. You can use these inputs to render only a range of your animation, rather than the whole thing. Let's create two number sliders so we can better understand how this works. Once we've plugged them in their respective inputs, you'll see a gray section appears on the timeline. This is the new animation range, which V-Ray for Grasshopper is going to render. If I adjust one of the sliders, you'll see that the gray range length adjusts accordingly. Okay, let's set it back to 130. You can also preview the animation or the custom range by right-clicking on the timeline and selecting one of the two options, Play or Play Range. Let's select Play Range. Okay, since we will render the whole animation later, we can delete the start and end number sliders. Next, let's examine the output parameters of the V-Ray timeline. The first one is the timeline output, which can only be connected to a V-Ray render component. Its primary function is to tell V-Ray for Grasshopper that it has to render an animation, which current frame the animation is at, and how long it has to be. Now, let's create a panel to see what values the other two outputs give us. If we connect the frame output to the panel, you'll see that when we move the slider of the timeline, the frame output gives us the current frame number of the animation. This can be useful in various scenarios. For example, we will use it to animate the panel movement of the facade. Before that though, let's connect the fraction output to the panel. You'll see that this output gives us the whole length of the timeline and a floating point value from 0 to 1. For example, if I move the slider to the middle, the fraction outputs a value close to 0 0.5. If we drag the timeline slider to the start of the animation, it will give us a value of 0. Alright, let's delete the panel and move on to connect the frames count slider to the frames count container node below. Then. Let's also connect the timeline's frame output to the current frame container node input. This enables us to use the timeline like a slider to control the facade panels. For example, you'll see as I click across the timeline here how the panels change their rotation. This allows us to get a quick preview of how our animation will look at a specific frame. Let's stop the interactive render now and then go to the V-Ray render component so we can configure it to render the entire animation. First. Make sure you have the Timeline node connected to the Render node, because if you don't, V-Ray for Grasshopper will render only the current frame and not the whole animation. Next, let's change the mode to Production Rendering and the Sampler Type to Bucket so that we can better utilize the GPU for a high-quality production image. Let's also leave the quality on very high. Note that while higher quality settings produce cleaner images, they do so at the expense of render time. If you have less powerful hardware, or need a faster rendered preview of the animation, you can try lowering the quality settings to low or draft. All right, a last and crucial step we have to take before rendering the animation is choosing a path for our rendered frames to be saved. This is very important because if we don't do that, V-Ray for Grasshopper won't save your frames anywhere, which means you'll have to render the sequence all over again. To specify a save location, simply right click on the output image input and select extract parameter. Then, double-click on the newly created Save File node and pick a destination for the animation sequence to be saved. 
we'll need to give the animation a name and also make sure to choose your desired format for the rendered frames. In this case, I'll choose JPEG images and then click Save. OK, after that, we're ready to render the animation. Simply right click on the V-Ray Render component and you'll see that we now have the Render Animation option available, which appears when you connect the Timeline node and switch the Render mode to Production. Let's select that, and the animation sequence will start rendering. All right, and now you've seen how we can use the new V-Ray Timeline component to animate geometry and definitions and create stunning-looking animations in V-Ray Next for Grasshopper.